Hello, so it's Lewis here from A-Level Physics Online and I was reading a story that came up on my phone earlier this week from the BBC and it was a story about this education expert who said that students like you should be revising for about seven hours a day over Easter. Now following that story, and I've linked to it below this video, um, there's a load of other people saying, you know, that's rubbish, you should have like time off and everything like that. But I did a bit more research, as you should always do. You should never just, you know, take stuff at face value. And I actually read the article that this guy wrote. Now, um, the guy is basically, he's a headmaster of, um, sorry, he's a chairman of the Independent Schools Council. His name is uh, Barnaby Lennon. And basically he talked about uh, five bits of advice that students should take to prepare for their exams. Now, um, I guess a lot of this should really be for people in year 13, or maybe people doing their GCSEs. This is when you've got big exams that are really, really important. And, you know, in the BBC article, there's lots of people saying, you know, that's too much. You know, it's putting students like yourself under too much stress. But I thought I'd have a look at the article. And actually, he does make some very valid points. So these are the five things that uh, Barnaby Lennon, the guy who kind of said that you should be working for seven hours every day over Easter, apparently, uh, this is some of the advice that he gave to you. So what he said was that the good exam results are made in the Easter holidays. And that doesn't mean it's the cleverest kids who always get the highest marks, or that often that does happen, but it's the people who work really hard and prepare and revise thoroughly. And to be honest, his advice is absolutely spot on, I feel. I'm a teacher, and I know that um, certain, at certain times you've basically got to get down, do the work, and then you're going to understand it more, which means that when it comes to exams, you've got a much better chance of a success. Now, um, the first bit of advice he had was basically to um, make sure that you've got all the materials that you need for the exam. So that's all kind of basic admin. And I've got another video about this that's on my website, um, will be coming up very soon. And he basically says that, you know, make sure you know which exam board you're doing, print out the specification, get all of your notes up to date. And if you don't have complete notes, make sure you photocopy somebody else's. I mean, to be honest, that's pretty much obvious stuff. If you don't know, um, if you don't have kind of the basic stuff at hand to begin with, then it's going to be very, very hard to actually make sure you revise all the material you need for your exams. OK, the next bit of advice he said was you need to make sure that you cover that material three times. Revision is revision. It's not learning something for the first time the day before your exam. So that means maybe you cover all of your material, uh, you know, well before your exams, maybe over this period in the Easter holidays. You then maybe cover it again in the summer term when you're at school and then you cover that same material for the third time, maybe in the days before your exam. Now, by doing this again and again and again, it means that you get this uh, all, you know, this kind of often quite difficult concept deep in your long term memory. So make sure that you revise stuff now. Don't think, well, I'll learn it in a few months time. Maybe kind of revise everything now, then cover it all again. And then finally, that third time before your exams. Now his next point, his third point, was a controversial one that got his story onto the BBC website. He said that you should work for up to seven hours a day most days of the Easter holidays. Not every day, you, you realise, but most days. Now do I agree with this? Because I know you're under a lot of pressure, you've got lots of stuff going on. I do. I think if you want anything in life, you've got to put the work in. I know that because obviously I've been working full time as a teacher for the last few years and I put in more than seven hours of work every day. But I also know that in order to grow my business, having this whole A-level uh, physics channel, I've put in a huge amount of work, which means when I'm tired, I will be doing the work. I'll make sacrifices. I won't be going out to do other things like socialising or going to do my own fitness. Instead, I'll be sat there filming videos in front of a laptop. And that means, you know, at some point you've got to make a sacrifice if you want to have that kind of longer term uh, kind of success. Now, somebody on the BBC article, they're a student at university at the moment, and um, they said that, yeah, basically they agree with that. If you work really hard, then you will do very well, okay? There's no way around it, okay? Um, the more time you put into revising, and that means sitting down and working through stuff without distractions, the better you're gonna get on in the long run. So, um, I think what his, his advice was, was maybe start at nine o'clock in the morning, only work for maybe one and a half to two hours at most before you have a break. And that means if you do that for seven hours a day during the daytime, you can easily finish all of your work, have lots of breaks during the day. You'll be finished at six o'clock. You don't need to work in the evenings. And that means that you do get enough rest. So yes, yeah, seven hours is a lot, but that does mean that there's another 17 hours every day when you're not actually working. So I do think that if you really want a success, you've got to sit down, spend the time learning the material for all of your subjects. Actually, that advice about starting at nine o'clock in the day sort of comes from his fifth point, which means that, uh, you know, you start your revision early in the day, don't work late into the evenings, and make sure that you actually go to sleep. Now, 
Um, I don't sleep enough. I, I should be, you know, as an adult, I should be aiming for at least eight hours of sleep a night. And this is the thing that when you're tired, you don't know you're making mistakes. However, if you get to, to sleep at a good time and make sure that you do have proper rest, it does mean that actually you, you do perform better in the day. I know it's hard when you've got other social things and there's like your phone and stuff like that, all this interesting stuff to do. But maybe you need to make sure that you just kind of try it this week, you know, try and get to sleep for 10 o'clock every night. Um, and yes, I know you're teenagers, your brains are all mushy and growing still and, you know, you don't work properly. But, you know, if you try and get to sleep for 10 o'clock each night or at half 10, something like that, um, that means you've got plenty of time to make sure that uh, all these kind of sort of neural connections are kind of being made in your brain. You can process information and the next day you're set up ready to work again and actually understand this new material. So his fifth piece of advice, and I'll come back to the fourth in a second, his fifth piece is to make sure that you do have as much sleep as you possibly can. If you do that, you're going to be working better when it comes to revising. And his fourth point was about active revision, which doesn't mean just making lovely pretty notes, covering everything in, having a few post-it notes here and there. Active revision means that you're constantly testing yourself on it. You know, cover the work over and maybe try and write out the key facts again. If it's a definition, make sure that you can just recite all of the definitions and go back to them. Even if you know it and you knew it last week, test yourself on that material last time. Maybe cover your notes and try and write down as much as possible. And it's this way of actually kind of ha having an active part in your revision, not just, you know, passively reading notes or watching my videos. You've got to be testing yourself all the time. And it's this constant testing which really kind of makes sure that all of that knowledge is ingrained deep inside you. So those were his five bits of advice. I've linked to everything beneath the video. What do I think? Well, I think, you know, he is an education expert. He's worked in, I don't know the guy, but I guess he's, uh, he's probably quite clever if he's got to where he has, you know, being a chairman of the committee of all these independent schools. And, you know, there's no two ways around it. If you want to do well this summer, you've got to make sure that you spend a lot of time working through your, your course, okay? Know what you have to know, make sure that you've revised properly, and then plenty of past paper questions. Anyway, um, I hope that kind of, uh, have you watched the end? Have you really watched all of this? That's, that's good. If you have watched all of this, that means that you're in a really good position. What I've also got on my website, especially for year 13 pupils, is a load of advice, which is gonna be updated weekly. So this is gonna be basically my exam kind of boot camp. Have a go at the work, and then you'll do hopefully a lot better. And this will kind of just give you some guidance, a few things to do every week in manageable chunks. And if you do that, then hopefully exam success will be yours this summer. Anyway, thanks for watching to the end. Uh, yeah, thanks.